I'm Grace and I'm at the BET Exhibition 2016 reporting for Eastleigh's BBC News School Report. BET is an annual event hosting and showcasing technology for teachers and ex educationalists. As you can see, thousands of people have turned up this year to see what the future holds for education. the really cool inventions in BET. It's called the OM Interactive and what it does, it projects a picture onto the floor and it takes all your gestures and controls everything that you do with the image on the floor. So I'm here with Andre and uh, Andre would you like to explain what you've got? So here we have the um, Eastley motor kit for the new micro bit. And um, what it does is that it helps the micro bit control motors, uh, which it couldn't do before. So why have you created this? Um, well, we were making a project at school and we went into a bit of a dead end because the micro bit couldn't actually power the motors. So we decided to make this kit to help um, power the motors and other schools to make robots and different inventions themselves. I'm here with Nicholas. Hello. Hello there. How are you? So the first thing that I wanted to ask is what is going on with your jacket? It's good, isn't it? It's good fun. There's lots and lots of wearable tech on my jacket. So I've got a, a, a Zero Pi, I've got something called a Code Bug, and I've got something called a Crumble on this side as well. So all of this is all wearable tech, and there might also be this, a micro bit as well. Okay. So um, what I would like to ask is, uh, what are you doing here today at the... Um, I'm here to look around at all the new amazing innovations, uh, meet lots of the teachers I know on Twitter um, and generally network and chat to people and get loads of cool amazing ideas which I've got loads of today. So um, I reckon you've seen the micro bits on, in the other stand. What do you think of the micro bits? I think it's a very very cool little device so I'm very uh, I'm looking forward to when when I can get my hands on one officially because I borrowed this one so I can't I, I have to give this one back. Um, I really want, I'm really looking forward to see what I can do with them in a primary school classroom because that's where I teach. I'm here with the inventor of the Microbit Watch. So Ellie, how does it feel to have invented the Microbit Watch? It feels really amazing because it's, I think the feeling that you get when other people just um, have a feel, like really like your idea and it's gone also to a lot of people and they're talking about it. It's great. I think it, it will be available uh, in a few months because only the year 7s are going to get it but it give, really gives us a chance to be creative and it's also really educational because I used uh, the skill of textiles in creating the watch so I think it will be really educational and a lot of students will like it. Thank you Ellie. Tell me a bit more about yourself and why you are here with Raspberry Pi today. Oh, well, that's a really good question. So my name is Carrie Ann. I work for the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And we're here today to kind of spread our message, um, which is to try and get children really involved in being the next creators of technology, from programming, um, getting started with um, computer science, to building really great, fantastical things like robots and garden projects and automating their home. And oh, the sky's the limits, really. So that's what we're trying to do. We know that you can program with Raspberry Pi. Um, what are the other possibilities and opportunities that um, school children can be using Raspberry Pi for? Well, so there's a big movement at the moment called digital making. And so we really believe that children want to make things, right? So kids loved Lego, right, and Minecraft, loved building things. Um, and so when children can see that they can build something with technology, they get really excited. And children of the future, right, you have much better ideas and understanding about technology than we have. And you can see that there are problems in the world that need solving with, with technology. And so Raspberry Pi allows you to be able to, to make or invent any think you want to be able to do. Um, you can see here today we have some robots and some other bits and pieces. Um, we have a, a balloon up here which has a Raspberry Pi in it which you can send up to space into the atmosphere to take photographs. Um, just anything you can think of that you want it to do, you can make it do. What are you doing here in the BET 2016? This year we have got Ada 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 which is a performance that's all about Ada Lovelace, who's the world's first computer programmer. And she created her computer program in 1843, and then she got written out of history. So what we're doing is I go into schools, and I wear this dress here, 
and we talk about Ada Lovelace and we take it from 1812 right the way through to the future all about how she changed the world with her computer programming and we use it to inspire people in STEM adding the arts to science, technology, education and maths. So you mentioned that you go to schools to perform Ada, Ada, Ada. Do you believe that children will be inspired by this to go into computer programming and to use her as an example for um, a career path in computer programming? I would like to think so because when she was little she came up with the idea for a flying machine before aeroplanes existed and so what the sort of things that we do when we go into schools is we do curriculum aligned workshops that get small groups of students working together to come up with ideas that of things that don't exist yet and then they have to have their ideas a bit like Ada Lovelace did when she was young their age and make it happen through working together, thinking creatively, and then applying it with using te technology, using components, and we even bring in conductive paint so they can design their equivalent of a flying machine and make it work. So um, on a bit more about the dress, I see that you've used lights as well, and the dress looks amazing. Can you talk a bit more about the dress? Okay, we have 4,400 addressable LEDs inside this dress and that means that each LED can be orchestrated to be whichever color at the whole spectrum so it's not running a movie it's actually doing it by code and I operate the dress using my hand which has got conductive thread conductive fabric and then we take the signal of when I touch my fingers and that changes the lights during the performance and in the back, I have a use of an Arduino, and we did used to use a Raspberry Pi as well, but that's a long story. And we've also got bridges that take the data through and make the lights work, and lots of power. I've got a lot of batteries back there. The whole thing weighs about nine and a half kilos when it's on. You've seen the dress, and you know about Ada Lovelace. How do you think that this might be inspiring in the classroom to people working with it? Well, um, I take textiles, so seeing the dress was a really good experience for me because seeing the LED lights and seeing the technology used on the dress as well we just really opened a different um, part of my imagination. So um, we're also learning how to weave materials and seeing the LED lights on the materials as well gave me um, a good impression of what I could use in the future. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, that's really inspiring. I'll be doing that in the classroom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My name is Remco Liefting. I've invented a project called 3D Canyes. And around 250 schools, primary education, children are building this 3D printer by themselves and are learning to work with this. And uh, I'm looking now for the opportunities here in uh, England. What inspired you to come up with this idea that children can print, make this? It was love at first sight. If you look at it, you want to touch it, you want to feel it, you want to know how it's work. And uh, those, uh, those energy, I, I, I want to provide that to also to children. And uh, if you look at the machine, you also you want to know how it's working. Uh, so uh, I fell in love with the machine. <laughs> Thank you very much. You are. Hi, my name is Paul Croft. I'm a director for Automaker GB and the founder of the Create Education Project. 3D printing is changing everybody's lives already and we're only just scratching the surface. We started the Create Education Project in the UK to make sure that boys, girls, children of all ages had access to the technology and already we're starting to see the excitement that's creating. So um, are you planning to put 3D printing in general places such as homes and school? Yeah, absolutely. We're already seeing um, the hobbyists have got them at home. We're seeing lots of schools now being given access to that. And then, of course, what happens is when people see how easy this technology is to use and how exciting it is, that's helping us open doors for other people. We're already seeing jobs being created in the medical sector, in the automotive sector, in aerospace, in engineering. There's loads of jobs that are being created just through people having access to 3D printers. How do you plan it for it to go in the future? I think the big thing for me is that we're only at the dark ages of 3D printing at the moment. Everything needs to leap forwards, the materials, the software, the firmware and the machines have all got a lot of development to do. From my personal view, that if we give your generation access to this technology, you're going to come up with some cool stuff that I can't think about because I'm too old. Thank you very much. No 
at Eastleigh, we're really into media and technology subjects. So can you please tell us uh, what this is and what you're doing here at BET? Sure, yeah. We, we put radio stations into schools to allow the children to actually make programs and broadcast them on the internet around the school and also to the wider community. So uh, a child can make a program, record something. Um, it could be uh, speech-based or it could be a story they've written or something else, or the, you know, a joke or, or a poem or anything they want to do. It can be included into the broadcast. Uh, it can be played at break times, at lunch times, before school or after school. And because it can be heard outside the school, it means that you can involve parents, grandparents or any Anyone else who wants to get involved. Can you explain how this can help kids in the future as well? Yeah, sure. Well, radio is a spoken medium, obviously, so it's really great for developing speaking uh, skills and listening skills and confidence. But beyond that, there's also a lot of written work involved in radio. There's a lot of preparation. Uh, when you talk on the radio, it's very difficult unless you've actually prepared, done some research and you know, worked out what you're going to say. So there's a lot of written work. Uh, also, it's a really good way of, of sharing the content that children have, have made. So the students can contribute, they can just have discussions, they can talk about the things that are important for them. It could be a platform for them to really really discuss and, uh, and um, work out what's good for them in the school. I can see that you've brought this amazing thing that would be perfect for people like us on the BBC News School Report. So um, tell us a bit more about it and why you brought it to bed. Well, thank you. Um, and I'm glad to be here. So what we have is the podcaster. So the podcaster takes any iPad, any size, and turns it into a mobile professional production unit. So you could shoot video, you could run news, you could film sports, you can live stream, you could record it, you could edit it right on there and share it to YouTube or whatever platform you want. Tripod, frame, microphone, light, lens, really anything you need to sort of run a professional news program for a school. And we came here because education is our biggest market. So the beauty of the iPad is that it actually shoots 4K high definition video now, and it's actually quite a good device. And all, most schools have iPads. So what we do is we take what the iPad is and just make it very, very useful uh, by adding all these things. And it's very handy. And you could do it all on one platform. You could shoot, you could edit, you could stream, and you could share. So it makes it very important. So as you know, we've seen loads of amazing inventions that have been created here. Loads of these can help inspire um, the future generation and the students of tomorrow, and hopefully can help us, with the students of tomorrow, create amazing inventions that we could use. I'm Grace, reporting for BBC News School Report.